There are a ton of insufferable young Hollywood quote unquote stars that are out there. Some of them are just vapid airheads that are just getting overcast and everything. I'm looking at you, Timothy Chalamet, all the way to the most insufferable entitled hacks like Amanda Stenberg and Rachel Zegler. But every once in a while, there is one that appears to have her head screwed on fairly well. And we're talking about Jenna Ortega. Now there's another video that I have that's either just come out for you guys to watch or it's gonna be coming out in the future where I praise her. I also give her a little bit of a critique because she's a little bit off on things, but I also say during that video that, you know what? I think she's just getting fed, or she's just getting fed bad information because in general, when she's allowed to process a different stimuli, when she's getting the information firsthand, it comes to generally good takes, okay? Especially when it comes to an actress because normally they're just vapid know-nothings and that's fine. You don't need to be an expert on every topic. You can have an opinion on things that you haven't thought through totally and completely I'm, I'm fine with that i don't know a lot about football soccer that is but i can tell you you know if somebody fumbles a dribble i can tell you that that's a bad play i can tell you that cristiano ronaldo is more talented than the local mexicans down there at the y oh no i don't need to be an actor to critique an actress that's just stupid commentary by low iq individuals but to flip reverse that and to talk about somebody who has at least an average to an above average iq i'll at least give her that jenna ortega says women should have their own franchises i don't want jamie bond and like i said I think she's on to something when it comes to this. Here's the thing. Yeah, women should have their own franchises. I mean, look at Barbie. I mean, not too close because I don't want to inflict any undue stress or brain damage on anybody watching this video. It's an atrocious pile of crap. But you take a look at the demographics who check that out. That's a female franchise. Okay. Hey, the Disney is trying to treat, you know, Lucasfilm and Marvel by feminizing them up, by demasculinizing everything that made them great to begin with. You don't see that working out well for them. You see Deadpool and Wolverine's success, and you know that's because Wolverine is allowed to be Wolverine. That Deadpool is allowed to be Deadpool, watered down versions, but they aren't emasculated any more than their characters would normally allow them to be. But peak Marvel trying to make everything into a female brand, well, that was the Marvels at the end of last year and how well did that work out well for, how well did that work out for them oh yeah only dropped you know, from film one 1.1 1.103 billion dollars to 206 million dollars holy but yeah if you want female movies make female movies just like tv okay television right now like broadcast television it's dying to death it still has its viewership but eventually boomers are going to age out and nobody's going to have a cable subscription but what dominates the airwaves still reality tv shows who watches reality tv shows women who are the stars of these reality tv shows women there's your success template let the guys have what they have over there and if you want to tell, and if you can tell a compelling female action story, we'll go ahead and do that. People have, I don't know, generally favorable opinions on Atomic Blonde. I thought I heard good things about that. That was an attempt to try to make a spy thriller cut from the same cloth of James Bond for women. It just, you know, didn't do well enough to warrant a sequel. And that's fine. You had Charlie's Angels back in the cut when it was Cameron Diaz, Lucy Liu, and Drew Barrymore. Hell, that got a sequel. It was trash compared to the original. I got a soft spot for the original. Not great by any means, but hey man, Bill Murray is Bosley. Like, come on, man. The cast was actually really good now that I think about it a little bit more. It's been a while since I watched it. But when you try to be so overtly feminine, or I'm sorry, so overtly feminist with the Elizabeth Banks reboot where you're just oh, overtly hating men, there's a reason that there's that meme that circulates on social media the moment that any piece of media derides their fan base and then complains in the subsequent weeks why nobody is checking it out. Elizabeth Banks came out and said, you know, Charlie's Angels reboot is not made for men. And then what is it, like a week or a month later? Later comes out why did no men check out our movie yeah if it's good you don't have to pigeonhole a project as simply a male product or a female product if you build it they will come simple as but let's get in to what jenna ortega is saying about this the beetlejuice beetlejuice star reacts to the trend of reimagining iconic male roles that's yeah, interesting you know it's the south park meme really it's sticking a chick in it and making her lame and gay Jenna ortega waited on the trend of remaking iconic fe er, films with female leads the wednesday star was doing an interview with mtv alongside her beetlejuice beetlejuice co-star Catherine o'hara uh host josh horowitz asked ortega's thoughts on the potential sequels i'm sorry 
story on other potential sequels. Uh, like, would she be interested in starring in a sequel to another one of director Tim Burton's classics, Edward Scissorhands? Or could hypothetically be called Edith Scissorhands? Oh my god, MTV, is this what you're doing now? That's why nobody's heard about you in the past 15 years. When did Jersey Shore go off the air? Ah, uh, with Ortega in the Johnny Depp role. I mean, if you want to tell a monster movie about, like, a five foot two Hispanic chick, you, I don't know, like, do, don't you want to tell La Ringa or something like that? Wouldn't that be maybe a little bit more fitting? Well, Ortega and O'Hara and O'Hara initially found the idea funny. Ortega quickly added, I love that there's a lot of female leads nowadays. I think it's so special. No, but we, we should have our own. I don't like it when stuff, like a spin-off. I don't want to see, like, Jamie Bond, you know? I want to see another badass. Exactly! Make original ideas. That's kind of interesting, you know, for somebody who's cut their teeth being Wednesday and in... The Beetlejuice sequel, but Wednesday, Wednesday's a female. I know, right? Just completely shattering people's perception. And Beetlejuice, I don't know which character she's playing in Beetlejuice 2, but I'd imagine it was, well, probably imagined as not a race, or I'm uh, not a gender swap. <laughs> um, it comes amid a press interview uh, getting some attention, which also brought the idea of rethinking James Bond. Yeah, that worked so well in Die Another Day that they had to send it back. I'm sorry, no time to die. Die Another Day. Yeah. You know. I was listening to a podcast earlier and they brought up Piers Brosnan era James Bond. So his tenure is just fresh in my mind, but no, no, no time to die. Right? Like what was it? Lasagna Lynch was supposed to come in at the behest of Phoebe Waller bridge where they were going to deconstruct James Bond and then hand the mantle of 007 off to Lasagna before. Yeah. It ended up going back in the can rewritten and yeah, they just ended up killing James Bond because that's so much better at the Venice international film festival on Tuesday, Daniel Craig. Oh my God, bro. Okay, listen, I, I, I like Skyfall. Talked about it before. It's definitely the second best Bond film in the Craig tenure. Not exactly like that's a high bar to cross, but I just like the poster and all, all things considered. But that one, you know, if anything's going to get replaced in my background, you can kind of see it. I'll just move the microphone out of the way. I added something recently, you know, it's some of my favorite key art from one of my favorite games in recent years that's back there. But yeah, if anything's going to get replaced in the background, oh yeah, it's definitely that Skyfall poster. I just like it because, well, I couldn't find an 1117, 1114. Is that how big the frame is? 1114 Casino Royale poster. So I got the, I got the Skyfall one because I like the movie. It's been a while since I've watched it, but I'll always assass or I'll always associate rather that era of James Bond with Daniel Craig's pure apathy towards playing the cinematic icon. It makes no sense at all whatsoever. Like you're playing one of the most, if not the most iconic fictional spies in the history and you don't want to do it and you just phone in a majority of your performances. Like I don't get it. Okay, but Daniel Craig appeared with filmmaker Luca Guadagino, okay, in support of their film Queer. That's what he's doing now, where Craig has a sex scene with co-star Omar Apollo. Okay, I'm replacing that poster too, sweet. This is crazy. Okay, Craig, whose version of Bond was killed off in 2021's No Time to Die, was asked if queer meant that Bond might identify as gay someday. Wow, that's, that is a reporter question if I've ever heard it before. Hey, you played a queer in a different movie. Does that mean that you can go ahead and rewrite history of your most iconic role could, could, could we just do that because it would make six people on twitter clap but you know shut down the question oh thank god guys let's be adults in the room for a second oh you know what i'm not gonna watch your movie but you know shout out to you the idea of shaking it up not just stirring get it because that's a james bond thing shaking it with your ass cheeks and stirring it with your pecker that's what he's talking about because he needs to be gay the straight white and often chauvinistic james bond has been a topic of debate for years how badass he is how if we ever return to an actual proper james bond if hollywood would get its head out of its ass and if barbara Bro uh, broccoli stop wasting the franchise's potential she'd cast henry cavill and sydney sweeney would be the next bond girl like it's easy slam dunk right there okay no i'm not just talking about what cavill would do to sweeney on screen but the franchise's longtime producer barbara broccoli uh, previously expressed a view that echoes ortega's take finally after flirting with it for a long time that maybe james bond doesn't need to be white englishman maybe it doesn't have to be i think the next james bond will be a man because i don't think a woman should play james bond oh yeah i believe in making characters for women and not just having women play men's roles i don't think that there are enough great roles for women 
Yeah, there's just a lot of them, and some of them are really knocking it out of the park, and it's very important to me that we make movies for women about women. Yeah, please, go and do that. See how detrimental to that bottom line it actually is, because if we're going to be completely honest, outside of Barbie, women like rom-coms. They like pretty basic stuff. When you take a look at the demographics and who goes and sees what, go ahead and make those films. Just stop ruining the fun for everyone, and yeah, before delving any deeper into the insanity that is Barbara Broccoli, the current state of a modern James Bond. I gotta give a shout out to Jenna Ortega for understanding the entertainment landscape, unlike people double quadruple her age that have presided over the downfall of entertainment. So I'm glad there's at least one smart one that's out there. If you could just work on the rest of your colleagues, the rest of your compatriots, it might actually be a cinema and entertainment industry worth saving. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.